Hello, everyone. So this week, we continue our discussion on prediabetes. But to start, I'd like to paraphrase a text from John Maxwell's book, Today Matters, because it captures so well what I'm trying to convey with these videos and all the health content that I share weekly. So here is a reminder. Your health impacts you emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. You can escape from a lot of things that might hurt you, from a job, climate, from people, but you can't get away from your body. As long as you live, you are stuck with it. If you make choices that cause you to be continually hurting or unhealthy, it'll affect every aspect of your life, your heart and your spirit. In other words, don't take your health for granted. So I just wanted to share that as a reminder for all of us. So today, I'm going to be talking more about prediabetes. And our topic is why prediabetes happens. And there are two factors that affect prediabetes that are often ignored. Last week, we talked about the more obvious ones, the fact that you know people with diabetes have three to four times greater heart risk of heart attack, a high risk of stroke, and uncontrolled diabetes lead to multiple organ damage, including eye, kidney, and nerve damage. And we answered the question, will prediabetes go away? So you can check out that episode from last week. I shared how physical activity, dietary changes, um, with physical activity and dietary changes, prediabetes can be reversed in a relatively short time. So um, you can look at that episode to find out more. But today I'm going to be talking about why prediabetes happens and two factors that can help to reverse prediabetes and they are often ignored. So you're listening to Connecting the Dots with Dr. Shai. I'm Lola Shai. I'm a family medicine and lifestyle medicine doctor and owner of In Touch Primary Care in Sugarland, Texas. We're an innovative medical clinic and we offer an alternative way to receive health care that is stress-free and focused on the patient. You can find out more on our website, www.intouchprimarycare.com. And if you live in Texas, you can schedule a free 15-minute consult online on our website. Okay, so let's get into it, why prediabetes happens. So first, some background. Um, Prediabetes becomes diabetes when the A1C is greater than 6.5 or when the fasting blood sugar is greater than 126 or, you know, 126 or higher. And last week we talked about just, you know, testing with a blood test. And we want to do that because most people with prediabetes and even diabetes don't have any symptoms. And we talked about a lot of times, you know, within five years, um, diabetes, prediabetes can turn into diabetes. Um, sometimes it's less though, because many people like nine out of 10 people with prediabetes don't even know they have it. So if they don't know they have it, when it's diagnosed may not be when they actually started to have it. So the timing can be a lot less or not known. So um, it's important to get tested. You can follow up with the primary care doctor if you have prediabetes. Primary care doctors are able to treat prediabetes and um, help with prediabetes. So let's talk about why prediabetes happens. So first, what should happen? Typically when we eat and carbs tend to be a large part of our diet, the carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. And what's supposed to happen is the glucose is supposed to be transported into our cells to give us energy. But in order for the glucose to leave the blood and go into the cells, we need a hormone called insulin. But when the glu glu glucose levels are too high in the blood, it's because it's not being transported into the cell. Then that's when we call we say a person has prediabetes or diabetes because the sugar doesn't leave the blood. It stays there instead of going to the cell. So depending on how much glucose is left in the in the blood, that's what would determine whether it's pre-diabetes or whether it's full-blown diabetes. So why prediabetes happens? Well, the first thing is there's something called insulin resistance, which means that for whatever reason, the body is resistant to action to insulin. So insulin is the hormone that's supposed to help the glucose go into the cell. The body does not respond to the insulin. So we call that insulin resistance. The other 
thing that happens with prediabetes is there is a declining ability of the beta cells to produce insulin. So beta cells are cells in the pancreas, and their job is to produce the hormone called insulin so that the insulin can get the glucose out of the blood into the cell. Well, something can affect the ability of the beta cells to produce the insulin. It could be the beta cells are dying or it could be they're not functioning as well. Well, one of the biggest things that causes that is long-term exposure to high blood sugar. So it's a vicious cycle in a sense because the body has high glucose for many different reasons and we'll get into it. And having high glucose itself kills those beta cells so that it doesn't produce the insulin required to get the glucose into the cells. So the cycle continues. By the time the fasting glucose is high, we know that the capacity of the beta cells has already been reduced by about 50%. So when we say your fasting blood sugar is, you know, over the normal limits, already we are already, which is, you know, normal diabetes is diagnosed at one, when your fasting blood sugar is greater than 126, we already know that your beta cells are already not functioning at full capacity. So you're already starting at a disadvantage, which is why prediabetes is so important to address and reverse. But the good news is the beta cell function decline can be slowed down and it can be reversed, especially if addressed early, which is why we're talking about prediabetes. So there are several factors that affect development of prediabetes in a person. So it's not just one thing most of the time. There is genetics, the environmental, which means like your gut microbe can also microbiome can also affect, you know, whether or not you develop prediabetes. And of, of course, there's lifestyle. So it's not, you know, that's why you would have to be aware of what your risk factors are, because you may not be able to eat the same way somebody else that does not have a genetic predisposition can eat. And that's why having your own doctor who can help you sort through these things can be helpful. So how to reverse prediabetes and what factors um, can affect it? So I mentioned earlier, it's possible to reverse the lifestyle changes. And while we can't cha change our genetic makeup, there are lifestyle changes that affect our microbiome and also affect chemicals in our bodies that can result in reversing prediabetes. But before I go into those two other things today, I want to emphasize that when we make lifestyle changes, the change needs to be consistent and they need to be permanent. So it can't be a change that one does for a few weeks or a month or even six months. We go into it understanding that this is how it's going to be going forward. And it's obviously not going to be perfect, but it should be happening majority of the time. And that's what makes the biggest difference. The other thing is it's important to work with a health professional. And that's because while here I can share general information and I can, you know, talk about sustainable lifestyle behaviors, a lot of times people require accountability to help to get the biggest results. And also a lot of people ex um, require expertise in sorting out for them what is going to work because general advice may not work for everybody there. Many times what works for one person may be different from what works from another per for another person. So working with a professional to help you sort through what is going to actually work for you based on your health history makes really gives you the biggest results because it's not one size fits all with healthcare. So having said that, if you're in the Houston area and you're looking for a doctor to help with reversing prediabetes or lifestyle changes, don't hesitate to contact us at In Touch Primary Care. I'm a family medicine doctor and a lifestyle medicine doctor. I'm board certified in both. And um, so you can check, you know, check us out. And if not, you can check out other lifestyle medicine doctors to help you in this endeavor. All right. So let's get into how to reverse prediabetes and the factors that affect prediabetes that are often ignored. We already talked about nutrition and we talked about physical activity last week. So today, 
the other one that I need to talk about is stress. Okay, because, and I bring this up because I've seen people work on the physical activity, work on the nutrition, and their levels are not coming down as much as they should. And when you dig deeper, you realize that they're under significant chronic stress, and that's going to affect it as well. So chronic stress increases our cortisol level, and that results in increasing chemicals that cause inflammation in the body. So when the body is under stress, it reacts by increasing the glucose production because it figures we need more energy. But remember I had mentioned earlier that the more glucose we have in our blood, it kills the beta cells in the pancreas. So it affects our insulin. So the problem with that is your body thinks it's trying to help you by giving you more energy, but that energy just, the glucose is actually causing problems, including affecting insulin, which causes you not to be able to get the glucose into the cell where you need the energy. So at times, less um, people with prediabetes and diabetes are eating better. Maybe they're even being physically active, but they're not paying attention to the high levels of stress that they're experiencing. And that causes their um, blood levels not to improve or even get worse. So stress should not be ignored. And their daily habits that we can incorporate into our lifestyle to help reduce chronic stress. And I've talked about this in a prior episode. You can look at episode 49, where I talked with a licensed counselor, Chrissy White, about um, stress and anxiety. And you can also check out the episode with Dr. Mary Leung, where we talked about burnout and weight. So that's episode 52. So you can go ahead and check those out, but it's important that stress is addressed. The other thing that is ignored is sleep. And sleep is very important. Sleep affects our glucose metabolism. And again, sometimes it's not considered as contributing to our health, but it's a very important aspect of health. So sleep is not just to rest. It's the way our bodies heal itself. And during sleep, a lot of vital things take place. So consistent, adequate sleep is required for the body to function optimally. So when sleep is impaired, our nighttime levels of cortisol and glucose are higher. And we already talked about what that means. In addition, our, web, our bodies are less sensitive to insulin when we don't get adequate sleep. So the insulin doesn't work as well. And then on top of that, our daytime leptin levels, which is a hormone that helps us feel full, are low. And so we eat more and we crave more unhealthy food. So sleep really affects our ability to properly process glucose in, and it does a lot of other things. So that's why sleep is, is really important. Okay, so we've discussed four things now for reversing prediabetes. We've talked about adequate physical activity, healthy nutrition, stress management, and sleep. And these things can reverse prediabetes. So imagine that you decide to take charge of your health today and you start being intentional about lowering your risk for diabetes. You actually go, you see your doctor, you get assessed for health conditions, and then you pick at least one healthy behavior and you work on it consistently. By the end of this year, you would have lowered your risk for diabetes. And not only that, you'll be more productive, you feel better, you have more energy, so it is certainly worth it. So I hope this helps and you don't delay your care. So I encourage you to start today. And if this has been helpful, go ahead and share with a friend or family that you think might benefit from it. Until next week, bye-bye.